Welcome to another edition of the Cornell Insider Podcast, a segment we call Down and Back. We are at Worlds here in Branson, Missouri, not Minnesota, Branson, Missouri. And uh, we are uh, honored to have Caleb Hurt, who finished as a number one. Oh, well, you got your doubles jersey. Yeah, I got today, my doubles. Number one today. ranked player in the, in the Worlds in ACL. Thanks for joining us, Caleb. Thank you for yeah, having me on. Yeah, we're going to do a little casual down and back. We're going to talk with Caleb about his throw and maybe give you guys uh, just a little bit of feel what it's like for one of the best players in the world and kind of how he approaches uh, each shot. Now, Caleb, have have you always done the step? Have you always been a stepper when you've thrown? Yeah, I've, I've tried a couple different ways, like the people stand still and stuff, but it's kind of like I think it's just all in what feels comfortable to you. I mean, if it feels feels good, stick with it. That's yeah. what I, you, always been my mind. Do you think on. for the people who are you know trying to get better social type players, simplifying the throw is that one of the most important things? So you're not up there brain freezing on how you're throwing. Yeah. Is that important? Yeah, I think it. It really. I've seen all kinds of types of different throws in in the game, and I mean, you have good players throw all kinds of types of ways. So yeah, basically, it's all in whatever feels good. Yeah. And I, I just go by whatever feels good. Well, you're a young guy, but, uh, you know, you don't throw that, I guess, the traditional, you see those guys throwing those carpet bags that are just flopping and rolling. Oh, yeah. You can throw that shot, but you're yeah. kind of a more traditional type thrower. Is, yeah. that, is that true? Yeah. I, I like, when I first started playing, I, when I first got into this, Matt guy was like who I kind of based my game off of. So yeah, I kind of went. That's I always thought if I just put them all in the hole, I ain't gonna lose. So. But you can still roll a little bit though yeah. too, right? You do that yeah. once in a while. Is that something that you've been adding to your game more, or what do you think? Yeah, I added it probably a couple years ago. I started doing it and trying to figure it out. I'm still not that good at it, but <laughs> yeah, oh. it, it it helps me out in some situations sometimes when the. I don't want to shoot an airmail or something. I feel like the smarter thing to do would be to do a roll. So, yeah, it, it definitely helps me out a little bit. All right. Well, let's do a little down and back. We'll talk as we play here. People can kind of see your throw. Most people have seen your throw, and then we'll talk about it a little bit once we go down. So right. you put the first one in the hole, then I'll see what I do, okay? <laughs> I might. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, I might score a point here. Look at this. <laughs> Are those some different bags you're throwing, or is those no, the ones? You... Uh, these are the Project 13s by okay. 7.4 Bag Company. Your yeah. new, your, your sponsor bag. Yeah, they're my bag sponsor for this yeah, year. Yeah, because we're used to seeing those traditional blue ones, but yeah, uh, these got yeah. a pretty similar feel to those. Yeah, they're, they're this is just a, uh, like a different. The ones I was throwing yesterday were the Project 13, but okay. they were they were a little bit faster set because the boards were kind of sticky, so I okay kind of chose them. But all right, we'll see if I can get them here. Come on, old man. Hey, here we go. We can get around that. Oh. Uh oh, much <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> so now talk a little bit about your process. When you when you're making your first throw of a round, um, yeah. is there any thinking process with that or is it just so natural for you or are you just stepping and just throwing it straight? Or is there anything that you're thinking about of oh because a lot of players talk to, they you know lock my arm and be sure to follow through. What's yeah. what's your? Does it just come natural to you, or? Um, I try to just not think about it because usually when I start thinking about it and thinking in my head about what to do, that's when I start messing up. So it's kind of like I always just try to keep relaxed yeah. and just throw. It. You like when I'm playing at home, I can just sit there and just throw, and I don't have to think. And I mean, I'll throw like. And to, and to get to your level, that's important, isn't yeah. it? Because you just can't be overthinking this yeah. thing, right? The when I first started playing, like especially in like front of big crowds and stuff, it definitely like you think a lot more. And the more I played, like over the years, it's you you start to figure out the more comfortable you get. And it's like yeah. it's kind of like now I don't have when I get up to play like up here or anything. It's like just like playing at my at, at my house. So sure. it's like I mean. I, we gotta say you're thinking a little bit about what the shot should be, what the yeah. airmail and stuff. But as far as just a, in the hole shot, it has to get to that point where you played enough where it just you're just throwing you're just throwing it. It's natural and you're yeah. just chucking and yeah. you're not saying, "Hey, dummy, follow through." <laughs> hey, lock your arm. You're just playing, right? Yeah, that's 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 about it. Yeah. All right, let's go one let's go one more down here. We'll talk a little bit more about your shot. Caleb finished number one in the world in singles and dub doubles too. Yeah, doubles, doubles too. too. <laughs> All right, with your uh, brother. Yeah, Isaac. Isaac. Yeah. How old is Isaac? 
He's uh, 14. 14? Is yep. he getting as good as you? Uh, he's getting there. If he if he if he had the same like mindset I do, he could be. This is that maturing but, process, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. You know, where you have to roll from bag to bag because when we see yeah. you play, um, very little emotion. Yeah, and you have to. That's important, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it definitely you is. Be jumping around when you miss one bag, right? <laughs> I, I get a little bit frustrated sometimes. But I try to not let it get to me. I just yeah. If I miss it, I'm moving on to the next round. All right, I'll do first bag this time. See if All I can right. put some pressure on you. Okay. All right. Look at that. There's a little cut shot. All right, a little yeah. right to left. You do that because you just don't want to touch my bag, right? You yeah, don't want to bring my bag I, I like trying to leave them there and make make my opponent have to make the push. Yeah, to yeah, go okay. In. All right, I'm gonna see if I can throw a block and make you maybe chuck an airmail here. Oh, I didn't do it. So how different when you're throwing the cut shot versus the traditional in the hole shot? There obviously is a little bit of an adjustment mentally yeah. of how you're releasing on that. How do you have, how do you do that? Um, it kind of all depends on like where I'm cutting from. Like that shot right there, I kind of when I come through, I kind of pull my hand that way a little bit more. Okay. Versus when I just throw a normal bag, it's just kind of straight, straight out. So it's a little more, just a little more. Yeah, of just a, pull. a little more pull that way. Yeah. And then same with like an inside cut bag. I had, I kind of like. Instead of like opening up my hand, I just kind of keep it like that. Okay, just so a it, different release, yeah. same thing, but just that different just release. Just a different release through. point. And what yeah. about your roll shot? Is that the, an opening up? Um, yeah, that's kind of like the same as the cut would be, but I kind of pull up, kind of when I when I let go of it. Yeah, Tr trying to basically what I'm trying to do is get the upward rotation of the bag, so when it hits, it just like yeah. bounces right. And over. we've done a lot, a couple of videos on roll shots and stuff like that. Is that important when people are learning that cut shot and roll shot? It can't be a completely different delivery. You're, yeah. you're saying it's the same thing. You're stepping and all you're doing is just something different here, yeah. right? Yeah. On the release. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, um, Originally, when I first started doing it, trying to figure it out, like I had a different grip and like everything for when I tried to do it. But as I practice it, I, I kind of got it now, now to where I can grip the bag the exact same way every time and just make basically make a different release point and I don't have to change the grip or anything. Yeah, like that. and that's important. Isn't yeah. it? I mean, you can't be changing your grip yeah. and changing stuff in the middle because sometimes those cut and roll shots, my son and I have talked about this, he's behind the camera, you can go 20, 30 minutes in the match without throwing one, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. It, it's got to be something close to your normal throw, otherwise yeah. it's just going to be awkward, yeah. right? Yeah, it definitely is, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, let's go down here again. Now this is your. We'll give you a plug for your new bag sponsor. Uh, three. What do you got? What do you got there? Uh, Seven Twenty Four Bag Company, Project Thirteen. Okay, and where are they out of? Uh, Pennsylvania. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll see a little different look for Caleb Hurt. Not those traditional blue rentals that we've seen no. all the time. But this, uh, that's, this year, this will be what where I'm be throwing next year. Yeah. Me and Isaac. Awesome. All right. Go light them up there, Caleb. Go ahead. See if I can put a block in front and make you do something. There we go. All right, there's a little roll over there. Yeah. Now you, now you touch my bag a little bit. A, a perfect yeah. shot would have been just to go and yeah. leave me right there, yeah. right? But still, not too shabby. All right, not too shabby. <laughs> Let's see if I can put mine right in front and leave you there. All right, there we go. All right, little airmail. I'm just going to try to go in front of it. Oh, I, there we go. <laughs> oh, try to only give up one. All right. <laughs> and what, on your airmail shot, just talk a little bit about that because people struggle with that airmail. Yeah. Is it just a little higher release or what are you thinking mentally when you're, when you're throwing your airmail shot? Yeah, I kind of, I, I release kind of a little bit little bit higher and put a little bit more I kind of throw it a little bit harder when I airmail too okay but you're but you're same your exact same yeah. delivery you're not yeah. changing anything in your yeah. delivery no I'm same same release just like, a little more oomph and a little yeah. higher right yeah and again that's important not changing that shot yeah all right I don't I don't really airmail a whole lot but I try to just keep the simple game of sliding and pushing because I mean if you can slide and push through anything, then you don't really have, need an airmail roll shot, anything. So. Yeah. And 
talk about the importance of there. There's a lot of people that struggle with that flat bag. They just got to play with it. But if they want to play at a high level and dream of being a pro, um, number one thing is you just got to get that bag pretty flat. Yeah, you? you do. Definitely. It's hard to push with a bag yeah. coming in sideways or tumbling Yeah, because that's going to get you eventually, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to put a lot of rotation on the bag. When you, that yeah. was yesterday when I played for the playoff. I lost the first game because I wasn't putting enough rotation when I was trying to push. And I I figured it out the second game, so that's I won the second and third game. Yeah. But See, I had you, to make that adjustment. To, yeah. See, even pros struggle a little bit. <laughs> you know, there are a little more tweaks because the average player maybe is off the board a lot, but you got those little things that yeah. you're thinking about that maybe you don't. Um, do you get tips at all from your family, from your brother, from your stuff? Do they see stuff in your throw sometimes that says, hey, Caleb, you're not doing this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They definitely, I, especially my dad. My dad watches, like, every game I play. So he knows exactly what I'm doing wrong. Like, yeah. basically, if, yesterday when I was laying up, I don't ever lay up behind anybody's box most of the time. They, if they got it right at the hole, I'm just going to go through it and try to make them play my slide game. Yeah. And whenever I'm laying up, it's like he knows what I'm doing, and it's like <laughs> I got to get it out of my head and go back to the game that I usually play. Yeah, because once you get to your level, it's about being able to lock in that yeah. play, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Just being locked in. Yeah. Um, one final question. How, how much do you practice typically? Do you guys play a lot at home with you and your brother? Um, when I first started playing, like, competitive in this, I played, like, every day. And now – I don't really play a whole practice a whole lot now. I go to a couple blind draws a week, play on the weekends. So yeah. I mean, I still play right much, but I don't put in ears like the practice hours I yeah. used to. And what's your hometown? Uh, Madison, Virginia. Madison, Virginia. So yep. folks, you want to show up at a blind draw in Madison, Virginia? <laughs> Caleb Hurt might be your partner. Would that be awesome? Caleb, it's been awesome. Yep. Thanks for taking time to join us. We wish you the best in uh, doubles today, singles tomorrow. As long as you're not playing us, we wish you a lot of luck. Okay? <laughs> Good luck to you all, too, and thank you for having you me. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Cornell Insider Podcast, our down-and-back version. We'll have more coming up uh, just a little bit later.